Over the course of the next five or so minutes, we're going to be covering how you can set up Blender to begin rendering your images and animations with ease. To start off, go to the Edit menu and then select Preferences. From here, come down to where it says System. If you're going to be using the Cycles Render Engine, you need to choose the correct GPU. Set to None, this will use the CPU. CUDA is for older NVIDIA cards, Optics for newer, HIP for AMD, and One API for Intel. In my case, I choose Optics, and then I choose my chosen graphics card. Then I can just close the Preferences panel. To render either an image or an animation, just go to the Render menu and choose either Render Image or Render Animation. You can also use F12 and Control F12 for the same functionality. For example, we can left click to render the image and then the image will be rendered in a separate window. If you render an image, note that the image is not saved. To save an image on your computer, go to the Image menu, then choose Save As. Locate where you want to save your image and give it a name here. For example, image.png. You can change the file format on save. By default, it's set to PNG, but there's a wide variety of other options here. When you're ready, select Save as Image and the image will now be saved to your computer. When it comes to rendering an animation, the output is going to be a little bit different. Go to the Output tab in the Properties panel. Come down to where it says Output. By default, any rendered animations are going to be sent to your temporary file folder. Ideally, you'll want to click on this button to open things up. Then you're going to want to locate where you want to create your new folder where you're going to store the animation. Here, we're going to create new directory. And I'm just going to name it Animation. Then choose Accept. Then choose Accept again. This will change the output file folder. Now, when I render the animation, it's going to be automatically saved to this location. For the output, you also have the choice of file format. By default, this is set to PNG. If you want to render a full movie file, select the FFmpeg video option. You can then go into encoding and change certain parameters such as your container, your video codec, and your output quality to change the final result of your rendered animation. A handy trick is to actually use the PNG file format first when rendering your animation and then convert it to a movie file. Here I've got a very short animation of a rotating cube. What I'm going to do is I'm going to render this animation as it is. Each frame is going to be rendered as a sequence. Once that's finished, I can close this window and I'm going to open up the output location. All of these PNG images have been saved independently. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to add a video editing workspace. Here, I'm also going to add an image sequence. I'm going to locate the frames that I just created. So for me, that's going to be on my desktop in the animations folder. I'm going to select everything using the first option and then holding down shift to select the last frame. And then I'm going to add the image strip. From here, I can return to the properties panel and change my file format to FFmpeg video. I can set the container and video codec however I like and then I'll go and render the animation again. This time, the animation is going to be rendered and saved as a movie file. If we return to the location, you can see that we have created an MP4 version of our image sequence. 
Finally, there are many other options that you can use to adjust your final renders in the Properties panel. In the Render tab, you can define the render engine, such as Eevee or Cycles. You can also determine if you want to use the GPU for Cycles, and you have many other options here for manipulating the final render result. In the Output, we have the ability to change the resolution either directly or by using a resolution scale. We can change the aspect ratio, the frame rate, the frame range, and more. So there's a lot of stuff here that we have just glossed over that is going to be quite important to learn as you begin to create more rendered images and animations. But that's it for this video. If you found it helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notifications bell icon for more videos and Blender tutorials.